Today, um, I believe that we are being blessed already. We're blessed because we came. So, I'm going to share with you a very short message on why the church concerns you. Why, why the church concerns you as an individual. Because many people think that the church concerns the pastor and maybe an owner of the church, if somebody owns the church. All right? So the first reason is because, and I'm just uh, preaching for just a few minutes, because we've already, we are, we are enjoying uh, a blessing. Amen. Amen. It's not like there's a sermon or something. It's just a presence. We are blessed because we came. Amen. Amen. Now, the first reason is because the glory the glory of the end time church will be greater than the glory of the early church. The beauty of the church is going to be greater. In Haggai chapter 2 verse 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord. And in this place will I give peace. Now, you see, there is the early church was a beautiful church. But the latter house is going to have a greater glory. And what happens in that, look at it, Haggai 2 and verse 9. And in this place will I give peace. Hallelujah. It is in this beautiful, glorious house, I'll give you peace. Amen. How many realize that when you come to church, you feel more at peace? R- raise your hand if you feel more at peace. And we need it. Because Ghana and I don't know where you are. There's tension. We are not in Israel, but there's tension here. How many realize that there's tension here? Where you are to there's tension. There's tension everywhere. Yes. So, look at the verse. That's why the church concerns you. We have to build together. Somebody said, when I come to church... Uh, I want you to preach to me something that I'm going to get. I really, are you the one to tell me what to preach? Since when did the sheep tell the shepherd what to say? What a sheep indeed. You don't tell me what to preach to you. This is my work. I'm, I'm supposed to be a pastor feeding you with knowledge and understanding. So I am telling you that the church concerns you. You can't pass by this church or any church for that matter and feel that it doesn't concern you. Yes. It's a mistake. And all the the greater you are in the ministry, all churches concern you. I find you get more concerned about general, general church than just your small church. So, it says, the glory of this latter house shall be greater of the former than the former. And says the Lord, in this place, this place, I will give peace. And so, a lot of peace is found in the house. That's why it concerns you. And uh, you, you, you may not know what is the use of the church? But as time goes by, you are going to find out that peace that passes understanding is something wonderful. And peace from God 
It's an important thing, an important commodity that you can't just find anywhere. So that's why it concerns you. The first reason is that because the, the glory is going to be a very wonderful thing, the church. Yeah. I, 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 I enjoy, I, I like church. Yeah. I like the environment of church. I'm quite comfortable and happy in church. Oh, yes. Have you heard of the golden age? Have you heard of something called the golden age? You see, many people believe that before we came into existence, there was something, maybe what they called a golden age. And the Greeks wrote a lot about that. Do you see? Now, how many would like to enjoy a golden age? <laughs> Do you know what is a golden age? Yeah, yeah. history student. I, I, we are calling on you to tell us what is a art student. You should be telling us. I, sometimes I wonder because I'll be telling the art students things that they, they are. Now, there are three characteristics. Of a, of a golden age. Do you want to know these three characteristics? How many want to know the three characteristics? Number one. Happiness. It marked the golden age. If it ever existed. Happiness. Number two. Are you sure? You are, the history students should be standing up and, and telling me all these things. Not me somebody who learned physics. Okay. Number two, innocence. And number three, plenteousness. These three things. Innocence, like purity. Then happiness, which is what we are aiming for in our lives. And then plenty or plenteousness. These are the three characteristics of the golden age. How many want to be part of this golden age? Now, when you come to the house of the Lord, these three things, they sort of seem to be descending on us. Number one, happiness seems to be coming. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number two, innocence. Like, there seem to be some things that are pure and good. Yes. Innocence. And then number three, plenteous. It's like, you may be sitting by a rich man, but it's as though you are as rich as the rich man you are sitting by. It's like, it won't be anything. We are all in the church and we are all together. And we are all sitting in the church together. It's like, whether you are rich or we are poor, it's Charlie. Waiting man who see before. Charlie, we are all here. Wow. Haggai. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord. And that is in this house. Justness. Receive these wonderful golden age packages for your life innocence, happiness, and plenteousness. In Jesus' name. Amen. And these things, you see that they are starting to come to you in the house of God. Amen. Number two. Why the church concerns you. Amen. A church concerns you because the church becomes like a nation. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You see, there's happiness in the church. 
there's innocence in the church and there's plenteousness in the church. Yes. Now, the church, all right, is like a nation. Now, what is a nation? A nation has everything in it. Yes. A nation has everything in it. A nation has an army. A nation has hospitals. A nation has schools, banks, currencies. It has its own language. You can see we have our own language. We say some way. We have so many words. Oh, yes. If you go and somebody say, oh, yes. You say, hey, you know that somebody is around. <laughs> we, huh? Mercy. Yes. Yes. Amen. Now, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10. It says, who has despised the day of small things? You see, when the church is huge, it's like a country and everything is in the country. You rarely go out for anything. And during COVID, we should have taken advantage of that. That everything would be in, in Ghana when they closed the borders and there were even no flights. That was when we should have become like, no, we don't have, we don't import chicken, we don't import rice, like Charlie, it's local. But I don't know if it happened. Mm. Hmm? In a mega church, in a church which concerns you, as you build the church, everything you need is in the church. All the important people for your life. That's why we share the grace. And all the important people for my life, they'll be in the church. Your beloved will be in the church. For sure. For sure. For sure. Your employer will be in the church. Your employee will be in the church. Anything or anybody you really need, the person will be somewhere. So when you walk into church on Sunday, it will not, yes, you'll be coming to be blessed. We'll be blessed because we can. But so many other thousand side effects of just coming to church. You can't even believe it. But you see, when people are short-sighted, when we are myopic, we don't understand the importance of certain things and the effect that it has. Yes. The other day I officiated a wedding. The bridegroom was 80 years old. Oh, yes. Let me tell you, every older person is still lonely. The only thing that God made that he said wasn't good was that man was alone. Loneliness. People are lonely. Huh? People are lonely. As we build a mega church, you'll never be lonely. Because Everybody that you need for your life, the person will be around somewhere. The person will be where? Around somewhere. One day, my mother was watching a video of our church doing something, and she asked me, where do you get all these people from? Because somebody was presenting, they were filming, they were doing, she said, where do you get all these people from? Where do I get everybody from? It's a nation. If I want somebody who speaks an American way, I get an American way. If I want somebody who speaks Liberian way, I get Liberian way. If I want somebody, huh? Chinese. Yeah, come and speak some Chinese for me. Come. Oh, come, 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 come.
Now, when I ask you a question, then you answer in Chinese. Hello? How were you, how is it that I'm able to have somebody who speaks Chinese in the church? Listen, if you don't keep quiet, you cannot hear the real Chinese being spoken. Come here, come here. Yes, how come I'm able to get somebody like you to speak Chinese? Well,我在中国的时候呢，应该应该是二零零八年的时候呢，我们先开了一个教会。我在那个教会的时候呢，我介绍了你和你所有的那个书本和其他的事情。所以呢，我就是用这个方式，就是介绍了你。Hey，let me explain. Want to say it in English? I was saying that when I was in China. No, no, don't worry, don't okay, worry. No. They, they, they don't need to know. I want you to speak Chinese. Huh? So tell them something to bless them before you sit down. Mm. I mean, like preach Just, to them. Yeah, tell them something to bless them. I want to say that we are in a very good place. We have a very good place. We have a very good place. So, I want to say that you should bring your children to this place. Good, thank you. Amen. How do you say amen? Amen. 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 Oh, clap for our Chinese speaking. Amen. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, the, the church concerns you because one out of every four people in town, right? One out of every four people in town is supposed to be in the church. And that person is very, very... It cannot be that one out of four people in Ghana are not important for your life. Everybody say one out of four. Turn to Matthew chapter 13. I will prove it to you. Hmm. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 3. A sower went out to sow, and he sowed, and the seeds fell. Some on stony ground, some on thorns. Verse 8. Some on good ground, and some by the wayside. So, when the sower goes out to sow, one out of four yield good fruit. That means that one out of four, at least in your country, are going to bring something good for you. One out of four. One, two, three, four. One, two. So, tons, wayside, stones. Good. Tons, wayside, stones, Good, good for you, good for God, good for all of us. Stones, not good. Wayside, not good. Stones, not good. Good ground, good for you, good for me. It's good for you, it's good for me. It's good for God. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One out of four of the people that are moving around in the system are going to yield something good that will be beneficial to God and to you. And so, the church becoming huge is very, it concerns you greatly because it's, it concerns the one out of four, at least, that are supposed to yield something good. And I tell you, something good comes out of the one out of four. Amen. Yes. If you like, you can look in your life, you'll find out that there comes a time where almost every good thing in your life, it comes connected to the church. Connected to the church. If you are part of the church, you see that almost any good thing, it is somehow connected. You don't have to be a pastor. I'm not talking about being a pastor. Yeah, I'm talking about being, I'm talking about why the church concerns you. 
Yes. Why it concerns you? You. It concerns you. Because the sower went out to sow. When he sowed thorns, ajay. Wayside, ajay. Stones, ajay. Fourth one, good, good. What is good? He was a good ground bringing good fruits. Good fruit that were going to benefit you, benefit God, benefit the whole world. A changed person. The person who sowed the seed in my life for me to be saved. He has sowed a seed and the fruit that has come, is it not benefiting so many people? Yes. So, the church concerns you, I'm telling you. People don't know. You see, it takes, it, 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 your eyes have to be open. You have to know. If your eyes don't open, you don't know. You, you will not know the importance. Yes. You don't, you don't know the importance. So, let us know. You see, for instance, a forest. People who are sitting with it, they don't know the importance of a forest. So they just cut it down. Yeah. They just, oh, Charlie, cut the whole place. Make, make an estate here. Make a what? Estate. That's why when you come to Mampong, you see we have four forest reserves. We have no plans of making it into an estate or anything. It's a forest reserve. And you see, it rains at the same time every day. Every day, it rains. There, it rains like that. Sometimes when it starts 2 o'clock, at 2, it's sharp, it will rain. It's like normal water. We are suffering in Accra. There are four reasons why it doesn't rain. You learned it in geography, isn't it? Four reasons why it doesn't rain in Accra. One of them is the cold ocean. The rain falls on that. One of them is the, the mountains here. And then other, those of you who did uh, art students, you should know all these things. There are four reasons why it doesn't rain in Accra. And now the, the climate is changing. So, And the fourth and the last reason. need that you have every need that you have will be met through the church yes Acts chapter 2 verse 44 Acts chapter 2 verse I'm not just saying things out of my, my head I'm saying things from the Bible Acts chapter 2 verse 44 and verse 45 it says all that believe were together and had all things common you see, what, when you are a, a mega check, what I own is also yours. You'll be, su- you'll be surprised to find out. You'll be surprised to find out. That's why countries where they chase away rich people, you, are ch- you, don't, you don't understand. You are, they are chasing the person who would employ people, who would be a blessing to many people. When you do that, it makes the country poor. You, you, you must know that the church will be, he says, they had all things common. Look, and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. You see, you will be shocked that your needs are met through the church. I had, I had my house through the church. Not the church Buying, even if the church was to buy a house, it is not a, it's not a bad thing. But it was through church. I came to church. And then a man who was in church, so he said, I will take you to a house, to a place, and I will show you a house. That time I didn't have a house. I was 28 years old. I needed a place to stay. And he took me. He said, oh, it was at the church. I was seeing him off after church. He said, I, 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 I have an idea. I will show you something. And he took me. And he said, this, this uncompleted structure is a house. I said, wow. That became my house. I found my house through going to church. Attending a convention. Yeah. Yeah. 
the first car, you see, I've received cars. Some say, oh, what you are doing, I want to bless you. You'll be shocked. The first time I was sustained, sustained, somebody said, be, if you are preaching, like you said, preaching like preaching in schools and all. I said, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I was 28 years old. I said, that, then I will support you. Oh, wow. I'll give you something small. Yeah. You will be amazed. When Jesus said to the disciples, go, but he didn't give them money. How through church you'll be sustained. I found my wife in church. Yes. Now, one day I met a brother who was in deep trouble. I said, what is your problem? He said, my house is with my wife and I can't go there. And he said, my television is with my wife and I can't watch it. And my remote, he had a very big remote. It is with my wife. And my wife is with another boyfriend. And my children are in that house. And he said, my wife, through the laws in that country, have been able to remove him. So he had lost his wife. And the wife had gone for, had got another boyfriend. So he said to me, I go to the house and I knock. He said, in my house or my own house, I stand outside. I look inside and I said, the boyfriend has put his leg on the chair. And he's, he's using my remote to change the channels. And my children, I've come to visit my children. And they say, wait outside. And I went outside and I said, the guy has put his leg there and he's changing the channels. I said, wow, this is a terrible, said, oh, terrible. So I said, where did you, where did you meet the wife? He smiled, he said, at a nightclub, you know, we're dancing and, you know, grooving. A grooving girl. <laughs> There's a difference between a girl that you meet in a nightclub and a girl that a church girl. Tell your neighbor, I'm a girls, tell your neighbor, I'm a church girl. Eh? I'm a church girl. And I'm a forever kind of person. What is reason number one? So the church concerns you. Are you listening? Because everything you need is in the church. Yes, everything. God will bless you. As you do the work. There was a lady. She was an Israeli. She was related. Yeah. She went to Palestine. The Jewish land. To form a, a, an orphanage. And she took mentally. Whatever children and other children. And she she was looking after them, children. She had given up all hope of marriage. And the, when the Second World War was getting to the end, some soldiers came to the area. Eh? By that time, she was about 50 years old. Yes. And some young soldiers came there as she was doing the work of God. And she used to give them food. Yes. And one of the young soldiers, he put his eyes on her. <laughs> and he said, this one, I love her. Do you know who that soldier was? Derek Prince. Derek Prince. Yes. That's how he got his wife. Everything you need, you find it in the house of God. I promise you. He said, look at the scripture. He said, every 
man, underline it, as every man had need. You, you always have needs. I have needs, you have needs. You find the needs to be met amazingly in the church. Whoever you need to see, there are only four people in this church who will take you to that person. One, you see one, you see two, you see three. The fourth person will be the person you are looking for. It's true. And I can tell you that for sure. I don't know who you need to see. Who, who do you need to see in the whole world? There are only four people, and they are here. One will lead you to two, will lead you to this, will lead you to that, and you'll be there. Four. Everybody say four. I need only four people in the church. They are taking me to... Mention the name of the person. <laughs> Stand to your feet. <laughs> oh yes no no you cannot uh, overthrow me you cannot overthrow me <laughs> all right what is the first reason the glory yes yes no and then into bracket the golden age Yes, you have the golden age. It says, therein you will have peace. Number two, the church becomes a nation. Number three, one out of four people in town are supposed to be in church. And number four, every need that you will have will be met. To it. Now use your phone to photograph it, please. Instead of just photograph the four. Uh-huh. And put under golden age before people forget. Pl- happiness. No, no, wait. They are going to add happiness. Golden age. Happy. No, no, no. Oh, add it to the points. Add it to the points. See me after church. <laughs> is it a science student who is doing it? It's a science student who is on the screen. Mm. Okay. It's too late now. So when they bring it with the correct thing, you can take your picture. But have you taken the picture of this one? Yeah. Take it. Okay, show it. Show it. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yes. Charlie, your house is going to be a golden age house. The church is a golden age church by the grace. Happiness, oh, innocence, and like a purity. Eh? You know, everything that they say, what, what, what is practice case? What is this? Practice case is innocent. It's an innocent thing that we are doing. Eh? Oh. Happiness, innocence. Plenteousness. Hey, a mobile. Charlie, why the church concerns you four points? That's all. You say, now I call it, I call it, take me home. Take me home and eat it in the house. Yes. Let us pray. Father, thank you for today. If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus. Lift your hands up. Maybe somebody invited you, but you haven't given your heart to God. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. If you are here like that, lift your hand like this. Lift your hand high like this. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand like this, come to me in the front. Come come from where you are standing and then move to, to the front here. I'm giving you only 30 seconds to do that. Come on, come on. Come right in. Come running, come running to that mercy God seat bless you. where Jesus I want to give is my life calling. To God. His grace will be your covering. His blood will flow freely. Come on, my friend. It will provide your healing. Come running to that mercy seat. Come on, come running. Come running, come running to that mercy seat where Jesus is calling, and His grace will be your covering. His blood will flow freely, and it will provide your healing. Say this prayer, lift your hands, and close your eyes.
eyes and say this prayer. You say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. I open my heart and I receive Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. Please write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Satan, I bind you. Say it again. Satan, I bind you. I reject you in the name of Jesus. I belong to God and I will serve God. Now lift your two hands like this. Say after me, Jesus Christ, I love you. I receive you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Now I want you to go with our pastor. She has lifted her hand. Please follow her. Take your communion. Now, hold your communion up like this. Father, thank you for the holy communion. We receive the body of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ. I will pass over you. over you Now the blessing of the Lord be upon you very strong. And may the turnaround of all issues of concern happen practically. The Lord bless you and give you peace from his house. The Lord answer all prayers. All special prayers you have prayed today. May they ascend as incense before the throne of the Lord. May the Lord answer you with a strong hand and avenge you speedily. The Lord make his face shine on you. And the Lord give you peace and show you favor. This week, may people choose you who didn't choose you the first time and who wouldn't choose you naturally. May they choose you, like you, favor you, point you out and select you from amongst many others. The Lord favor you and the Lord make his face to shine upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me hear your very loudest Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Take out your amazing